Hi everyone, my name is Duration. I'm here as the host of Think Tech Hawaii show called Finding Our Future. I'm here every other Wednesday from 1 to 1.30. And this show is called Finding Our Future because we talk about issues that matter to young people or anyone who cares about the future. And we cover a lot of issues from sustainability to spirituality, um, many things. So today I'm really excited for our guest, Maisa Thayer. And um, I met Maisa through her role as a yoga teacher at uh, Surfriders Beach Cleanups. And we got into a really great conversation about um, divine masculine and divine feminine energies um, and kind of a lot of things around gender in the modern world. So thank you for being here, Maisa. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on ThinkTech. Yes, awesome. So I guess just to start, I'd love if you introduce yourself and why you're passionate about this. Okay. Um, well, my name is Maisa. I was born and raised on the east side of Oahu. And I got really passionate about this because I worked um, on the waterfront, on the waterfront driving ships for Matson and different container ships. I also worked for Norwegian Cruise Lines. Just was in a really male-dominated environment and so i took on a lot of male dominated trades to get um to be successful in that environment and kind of in my late 20s realized that i really was rejecting the feminine through doing my own work and so i got really passionate about understanding um and, and kind of in the discovery of what is the feminine and what is the masculine Right, that's interesting. I didn't know that about your history. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I think the way that I relate to this topic and that many people have maybe heard about it already is maybe in the form of toxic masculinity. I think that's kind of a phrase and topic that's been thrown around a lot, especially with the rise of awareness around um, male dominant cultures and, and w what we've grown up within that as women and as men um, and, and as boys and girls, as young people too. So um, can you kind of explain what toxic masculinity is, like how you would define that um, and what kind of the other side of that is? Yeah, so I think that toxic masculinity is when the masculine gets really out of balance. Um, and I want to be really, really specific that it's not just to gender, you know, sometimes women can take on a lot of masculine traits and become oppressive. Um, and that's when I, what I see most with the wounded masculine or out of balance masculine is that oppression and control become very um, important. Yeah, that's really, um, that's really important to distinguish that it's not about being a man or being a woman, but it's just like an energetic definition of these two things. Um, so when it comes to masculine and feminine, um, what do you see in terms of like where our culture has been and where it currently is in terms of um, stepping into that or being disconnected from that? Yeah, that's a great question for what's going on today. I think that where there's, like you said, a lot of awakening and that awareness um, and so in moving forward, it's really going to take us to understand what the behaviors are on the day to day that um, are being rewarded in patriarchy. Right. And it's, a lot of the masculine traits are being rewarded in this society that we live in. And I think now because of different things that have happened, the Me Too movement and all these types of things, the feminine is starting to rise and also be valued. And um, that's going to be really important in, I think, what we, the skills that we need for things like sustainability and caring about those issues. Yeah, exactly. And I wonder if, do you feel um, there's a, what do you feel is the opportunity in terms of like where we are with the environmental movement and in um, our potential to succeed or fail 
in solving the climate crisis? Like, do you see that there's kind of a potential or connection there? Um, and I guess the reason I thought of this is because like this whole mother earth and is there like something mm -hmm. and you know, why is um, the earth considered feminine and what do you see as the opportunity for us to recognize um, our environmental solutions? Yeah, I think that's a great question as well. I think the thing is all these women step up into politics right now all over the world and they're coming in with a lot of environmental issues because the feminine um, is nurturing and very connected to earth. Um, and maybe it'd be helpful if I just maybe distinguish what the, what the different issues are of masculine and feminine. Yeah. So when we're talking about the feminine, we're talking about process energy we're talking about success through relationships we're talking about nature feelings emotion spontaneity um dependency and understanding relationships dependency is like for feminine and that's why we understand relationships and we value relationships um it's not a negative it's only negative if it gets out of balance that's something that's really important with these two dynamics um and the masculine is kind of a more linear, straight, um, cerebral, mental, rational structure and order um, to things. And it kind of identifies more with technology and having the success be seen through finances or providing. And that's the difference between, I would say, the two dynamics. So when you have one really out of balance, which I would say the masculine is, um, you need the feminine to rise, to bring in that point of view that's been kind of lost. Yeah, what ways would you say, like in specifically, would you say that the imbalance has occurred? Yeah, I would say specifically not valuing feminine traits because if you do listen to like a lot of the feminine traits such as um, feminine traits are emotion and male traits are, are ration or rationalization or logic, a lot of the masculine traits were birthed out of feminine, right? Like um, we have to remember that because logic is secondary to emotion. I mean, if you think about like how the world evolved, people like had to listen to their insight and their intuition before they had logic. They didn't know that A plus B equals C. Um, they just had a hunch, they had a feeling and they went with that feeling. And then time over time, it kept working and that's how logic got created. So I think that there was a disconnect for a long time and just being in the masculine and forgetting about where we come from and valuing those other traits um, that are really important for solving um, solving the, the dependency and relationships of humans to, to the planet, right? It's that mm. connection to the planet is the feminine. Um, and I think that that piece is huge as far as understanding, like, if you have a feeling, you need to listen to that feeling that it's not right to walk the beach and see plastic. And and the masculine is also important in doing something about it. Mm -hmm. um, but listening to the feeling first and foremost, I think is what is so important about the feminine rising. Yeah, I really like kind of like this concept that we all come from women and therefore like the feminine births all other kind of aspects of our essence, whether, you know, we have the masculine or feminine dominant in our energy. Um, why do you think, I guess, historically, you know, it's, we live in a patri patriarchy, a male dom dominated society for the most part, um, with some exceptions. Why do you think historically that was the path that we went on? Like, do you see any clear signs as to why that was, you know, like, why didn't it go the other way? Just curious what your read is on that. Yeah. That's a that's another really great question, and I I think that um, matriarchy did you know rule at one point. We know that it did, 
a very, you know, a long time ago. And there's a reason for it um, not ruling now. And it could be that the, the, the feminine got out of balance at one point, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, because as feminine rising, it's really rising strong and the pendulum swings, right? Um, and I think that the masculine was like, maybe the feminine really got out of balance and needed to find some type of container, reason, ration, um, structure and order for the amount of people that were now in society. It worked good, well in small tribes and villages, but when you get to cities, like order, boxes, right? Like that's all very masculine, the, the structure of a city, very square, you know, feminine is circular. So um, mm -hmm. it's just efficient and time. And, and the more uh, we try to fit into a little box, right? With all the things, everything we have now is a box. Anyways, <laughs> um, it's, it all has to do with efficiency and resources and being more efficient, which the masculine is better, you know, is great at. The feminine is spontaneous. Um, and so in some ways, when you have so many people, uh, you that can be dangerous. So I understand mm. possibly why um, the masculine got so extreme, um, but it got disconnected and is now out of balance. So, yeah. That's right. Yeah, and I, no. yeah, exactly. And, and I get it. Like, you know, it's like the right angles and straight lines. Like, it's probably just easier yeah. for building and more. Yeah, it is like the efficiency thing. And I think. That is extremely important when I just think about like the work many of us do, like efficiency is so important and productivity. Um, but given what's happened, you know, where we are now with like capitalism and overworking and um, mm -hmm. hyper focus on productivity and efficiency, like there there is a need to reevaluate. Um, and I've kind of been noticing over the last several years where there's been a huge uptick in female empowerment and women's movements and like just this uprising of women saying, you know, we know our power and we're going to claim it. And, you know, this is our time. And so I wonder, um, like, I've kind of heard from some men how they're feeling about it. I think it's mostly confusing, mm -hmm. although they're yeah. like overall supportive. But I think for from a male perspective, it is confusing in terms of like identity and um, uncertainty for the future. So I'm wondering if you have experience talking to men about this and what you feel they feel about this or think about this and kind of like what, how they should feel like moving forward or what their vision is, um, what their path can be moving forward in this space. Yeah, I get this question a lot because I do a lot of work in women empowerment and I get the question like, are you anti-men because you're so about the feminine rising? And um, the answer is absolutely not. I understand that the masculine being out of balance means that the masculine was wounded, right? Like the masculine really like wounded at some point was like, I need structure because something created chaos that didn't feel good for the masculine. So the masculine's overcompensating now with so much structure and um, so much rationality. And and that has made, him, made the masculine very unhappy in the long run, I think we're seeing, because the feminine traits of feeling uh, spontaneity or really nurturing are really what you need for a wholehearted life. And um, I think that what has been difficult is is women rejecting the feminine in men is something that needs to be addressed um, as far as what we as women can do um, for them in this process of this balancing out. Um, because if we continue to ask them to change um, and don't really get specific about what that looks like or accept their feminine traits, you know, when they cry or when they do express emotion, we're like, oh, like act like a guy. And, you know, how do we value those traits over valuing masculine traits? I think that women in general need to come back to the understanding that we oftentimes choose alpha with who we give our attention to. And we also choose alpha of the traits that we choose to give attention to as females. So I think that's a big piece for us to, to remember. But as far as men that feel this way, um, I think that they need to reach out to, to women and relearn how to um, hold space for the feminine uh, 
for the feminine chaos and for the feminine expression because it's been stomped out. I mean, they've murdered women before because of their expression. So there's a lot of fear of women to fully come into that expression. And so mm -hmm. men need to also honor women's expression of the feminine. So just the expression of the feminine genders needs to be um, relearned in some ways and then allowed for like, you know, when you're learning something, you're not going to come out really fluent. You're going to come out maybe talking like a five-year-old or, you know, just having patience with that process. Yeah. This kind of, you kind of mentioned um, there's like violence against women sometimes and, and how this manifests maybe because of this female expression that men have, you know, aren't used to or aren't prepared to like honor and hold space for. And this kind of reminds me of, you know, what's happened this weekend with the um, with the shooting of the police officers and the fires and kind of how that, you know, tragedy here on the island ha fits into the statistic that um, men are almost always the perpetrators of violent crime and mass shootings and I mean, just destruction, overall destruction. And obviously that's not a spiritual or conscious manifestation, but there is, you know, something that's occurred and manifested to lead to this um, pattern. And um, I'm wondering like what you see as, you know, like specific actions you recommend to an individual, like somebody who's watching, who's like, okay, perhaps I have toxic traits, you know, no matter what gender you feel or are, um, like what specific action items can you give to people who really want to work on this and want to contribute to, you know, a more conscious form of themselves? Yeah, I think it's really sad about the, that, you know, men are the ones who usually, you know, commit murder, but they're also the ones who, uh, usually the ones that can carry out their suicide, you know, two times, uh, they're doubly likely to carry out their own suicide um, as well. So just in saying that, the masculine is just extremely wounded and um, that attributes hurt people and hurt people. And uh, they're, they're hurt, but not in saying that it's the women's fault to fix them. I want to make that very clear because <laughs> it is not. Uh, it really takes their self insight. But some things that I would recommend uh, one thing is that I've kind of made it my life work I'm to kind of allow the feminine back in. So I'm, I am holding a workshop here at my yoga studio, uh, and it's basically geared for skills for women to tune back in to um, feminine expression without fear. I think a big piece is that women are looking for permission, constantly looking for permission to be full, fully feminine, their full expression because of being told they're too much and being told their stories are not believable. And um, the feminine needs to give permission again. So this workshop, we're gonna work in connecting the woman to allowing herself to full expression. And then we're going to also have a male facilitator who helps men learn how to hold space for the feminine. And I think that a big piece is that our society is so results-based because we're so masculine that men are always looking. Um, and so they're like, how can I fix this? How can I fix what I've done to women? How can I fix, um, a woman when she comes to me and, and is upset, I want to help, I want to help. And that's the masculine to want to protect and to want to get the result. But basically the skill that we're asking men to gain and through this workshop is to learn how to just hold space for expression, full expression, and then receive it and not need to linearly walk anyone through anything or try to fix anything but learn how to hold space because that's the biggest piece in healing um people are going to find their own journey to that healing but we have lost um the ability to have those tough conversations yeah yeah this kind of pops up um in like relationships that i've been in and um that my friends have been in my girlfriends and you know we there are like these two types of men that I've in encountered, um, even in like the workspace where it's like, you know, the one type of man that is like 
the whole mansplaining. Like they want to like teach you things and explain things. And they also want, yeah, they want to fix things and like create the solution and repair. And I think in some ways that's very beautiful and like needed in our world. But on the, um, the inverse of that is that, you know, women vent, you know, they vent a lot and they have feelings that they need to express and whether they have a solution or not is like really irrelevant. Oftentimes the women, like we usually just like want to express it, all of the like, you know, thoughts and feelings and even the crazy ones. And then once it's like out in the world, it's like therapeutic and like we can move on. Mm -hmm. Typically is what I found, especially when I think about like we, when me and my um, girlfriend hang out and we mostly just talk through things and explore things together. And we have answers, mostly questions, and we just talk through it. And there's no like, you know, strong desire or necessity of like a solution. And so I think it is important for men and masculine energies to like, you know, understand that the space holding and like the listening and being is like sometimes like the most valuable thing you can offer, um, you know, to someone who's expressing challenges or thoughts. And listening wholeheartedly without bringing in assumptions or um, bringing in, you know, your own kind of goal for where it's the conversation supposed to go and and really seeing someone in their expression seeing a female because I, I hear you on the two different types of guys there's usually like the type of guy that um really wants to mansplain and like tell you the way out like this is going to be the way this is the how i'm going to help you through this like you're a damsel in distress that needs the masculine right and then there's the kind of guy that's completely aloof and doesn't even try to help at all and the middle ground is kind of like a guy who comes and just can hold space and see and ask and then be okay with whatever the uh, outcome is kind of yeah and when we talked um about this topic first which is why i wanted to um interview you you kind of talked about how the ego plays into like the divine and masculine. So you mentioned like that stepping into the masculine and stepping into the feminine means to step into or back off of your ego. So can you explain that further? Yes, I love this quote that I told you. Um, So Elizabeth Gilbert, I have to give her the credit. She said that the divine masculine is when a man puts down his ego and the divine feminine is when a woman picks hers up. And I, I think that how, uh, how I see that and interpret that quote is that when a man is willing to put his own needs and aspirations, goals down, um, he will really open up to hit the fullest and, the, and the, the not wounded piece of the masculine, but the empowered piece of the masculine um, because ego is something that you can hide behind. Uh, you can hide behind goals and accomplishments you know your real self Mm -hmm. can and the feminine picking up the ego is her picking up her shakti energy which is like more of that sensual sexual energy um and not in a way of needing to be seen but just needing to hold that for herself in an empowered way um holding it and being like you know, I'm going to shock myself up. I always say that just to like, just for me (laughs) and, and that empowering feeling of connecting to self requires the female to pick up her divine feminine to pick up a little bit of that energy and the masculine has to put it down to see himself. Yeah. And it almost seems like that's, um, again, like rebalancing because, you know, the way many of us are brought up and raised, um, you know, as women to be like a little bit more passive and quiet. We learned this like through our families and schools and um, and how men are kind of like, oh, boys are always taught to be ambitious and motivated and successful. And, you know, the girls are like, you know, as long as you're pretty, you'll be successful. Like there are few things that provide us value, if any, outside of our um, phys- physicality um, kind of in, in the mainstream culture. And so it, it seems like that, you know, recommendation um, is a rebalancing of that. And it makes me think about 
the I don't know if it was a study, but I've heard in several podcasts and and um, books and stuff that women say sorry like way more often than men. And you know, I think most people experience this. I can name several people who are women who say sorry excessively in situations they really don't need to, just like all the time. And um, yeah, so what are your like what are your thoughts on like that? Like how we're taught and why women like are more apologetic and why men tend to be more confident, at least, you know, generally. Yeah, I think that it really has to do with the effect of society and the collective on the female, right? Like, like you were talking about, um, women are so much susceptible to that dependency to trying to please the need to please and the dependency of now really pleasing, um, this external validation. And so when I say a woman picking up her ego, I mean like picking it up and holding it unapologetically, not needing to please other people and have them see her, but picking it up and knowing her sacredness and knowing when she can say no and not feeling the need to sort of bleed out into everyone else's um, expectations. Yeah, totally. Um, And another thing that, I've been thinking a lot about is this um, gender roles, you know, and how there's been a whole feminist movement to almost eliminate it and say, like, these don't exist, gender doesn't exist, and all this Mm -hmm. stuff, which I think, you know, in some ways is progressive, but in some ways also ignores this, like, natural um, feminine and masculine essence. And so I've kind of been leaning towards saying, you know, like, I think gender roles um, exist for a reason and they matter in some ways as long as they're not oppressive and um, promoting inequality. So what are your thoughts on on gender roles? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's a hot topic right now. Um, I think that it's great, you know, to be progressive and to just move into the energetics of it. But I also think that polarity is really important. Polarity of like, this is feminine and this is masculine because polarity is what creates um, that magnetism, you know? Um, And if we, so on one end, it's really beautiful to be like super balanced beings, but sometimes the polarity is makes for faster shifts. Like we saw like Trump is like polar right and we've got the polar left. Like that is creating a lot of change right now versus like for a long time we had this, you know, very close to close parties. So I think that I agree with you. I think that gender, it can be um, a really beautiful merging like yin and yang at some time. Yeah. Um, Okay, we're in our last little bit here. So I just want you to leave us with any kind of like, um, you know, message that you would put on a billboard or something that you would want to tell everyone if you had a moment to share something. Oh, wow. Um, A message I would want to tell everyone is that, um, you know, this type of thing takes intention and attention. So just kind of like finding your awareness of where like, just noticing, oh man, I'm really my feminine and having what's the intention with that? Why are you using that energy? So I guess just attention and intention is so important for anything, uh, any type of work that we do, healing or just walking around every day. There you go. Yeah, I like that billboard. Awesome. Well, thank you, Maisa. Maybe I'll have you back on one day and we can explore this and other topics. So it's awesome to have you on and um, it's been cool learning from you. Thank you for having me, Deray. Yeah, I would love to come back and check out the feminine archetypes. Those are really helpful to women as well. Oh, yes. Oh, we didn't get to that, but yes, sounds good. Feminine archetypes. Okay, thank you. Thank you.